Assalamu alaikum, my dear cadets of class 9. Welcome to my online physics class. During this corona outbreak, you were not able to stay at your second home. That's why this online effort that has been taken by the authority of Borishal Cadet College. I think this program will be very much helpful for all of, for all of us. During this corona outbreak, please don't go outside of your home. Please stay home, stay safe. You should try your level best to follow this corona preventing advice. Please see this image and follow this. Before commencing my class, I would like to introduce myself. This is Mr. Kamrud Jaman Khan, lecturer, Department of Physics, Borishal Cadet College. This class for class nine cadets, subject physics, chapter seven, and it is symbolized as a name that is wave and sound. Yes, you are getting concept that this chapter that is going to be started is about sound and wave. Today's topics are simple harmonic motion, types of wave, wave related quantities and characteristics of sound wave. Key points of my today's discussion, simple harmonic motion that is symbolized by SHM, periodic motion, Hooke's law, amplitude, time period, frequency and superposition. Learning outcomes. After the end of my today's discussion, cadet, you will be able to explain the characteristics of waves. You will be able to cite and measure the simple mathematical relation among the quantities related to wave. You will be able to explain the characteristics of sound waves you will be able to set up the mathematical relation among velocity of sound, frequency, and wavelength and measure the quantity from it. And lastly, you will be able to explain the change of the velocity of sound. Now I'm going to start my today's class. Before starting simple harmonic motion, you have to know what is periodic motion. Periodic motion is one type of motion where particle moves or starts to move from a definite point along the path of its motion in the same direction in a definite interval of time. This type of motion is called periodic motion. Here, the main parameter or our main concern is to definite interval of time okay otherwise this motion should never be called periodic motion it should be called it should be called circular motion okay here suppose you are starting you are starting to move along the circular path okay now you start to move from this point after covering total path you have reached here by two minutes okay these two minutes should be called your time interval that is our time period okay and for the next next complete circulation or next complete covering this whole path if you need or if you are completing this whole path by 1.5 minutes then it should never be called periodic motion okay so time period should be definite that's why this term is written here definite interval of time definite interval of time okay definite interval of time okay my dear boys let's I'm going to discuss about 
hybrid motion or simple harmonic motion if a body executing periodic motion if a body executing periodic motion moves in a definite direction for one half of its time period and exactly for the other half in the opposite direction then such a type of motion is called simple harmonic motion and there are various or numerous number of example for simple harmonic motion suppose guitar tuning for simple pendulum cradle let us suppose this is our rigid position from this uh, rigid position a iron ball is hang here through a or along a string okay now after somewhat displacement this iron ball starts to move okay starts to move so this is the trajectory or path of movement of this iron ball and complete for completing this path or covering this length it will take some time this time is called half time period okay and from this position from this position this body will starts to move and after reaching here this body will meet another half of its time periods that's why simple pendulum is called vibratory motion let's see a video after observing this video i think your concept will be very much clear simple harmonic motion let us discuss about shm observe this simple pendulum the resting position of the bob is known as mean position one complete to and fro movement of pendulum about its mean position is known as an oscillation or vibration observe these points in simple pendulum simple pendulum oscillates about its mean position acceleration and displacements are in opposite directions acceleration should always be directed towards its midpoint in other words the above are the conditions for a body to be in shm definition of shm a body is said to be in simple harmonic motion if it moves to and fro about its mean position such that at any point its acceleration is directly proportional to its displacement in magnitude but opposite in direction and is directed always towards the mean position mechanical wave sound wave in this example a mechanical wave like sound wave propagates as a result of simple harmonic oscillations of the particles of the medium projection of a particle performing uniform circular motion on a circumference of the circle makes same displacement in same intervals of time okay my dear boys after observing this video i think your concept about simple harmonic motion has been clear now you can see the main criteria of simple harmonic motion acceleration is proportional to the negative of displacement that's why i have written here a is directly proportional to the displacement but its direction is negative its direction is negative okay after reaching the highest position after reaching the highest position this bob always tends to back always tends to back towards its mean position towards its mean position that's why i 
am using here minus sign. That's why I am using here minus sign, okay? And it obeys Hooke's law. That is, Hooke's law is stated that within elastic limit, within elastic limit, restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement or to the extension, okay? While you are while you are stressing this spring after somewhat extension, this spring will always tends to back its mean position. That's why, due to the withdrawn of your applied force, this spring has reached its mean position. Okay, so it is also a, it is also an example of simple harmonic motion. Equation of simple harmonic motion. Yes, you know it very well that F is directly proportional to the displacement. So I have written here F is equal to minus KX. K is spring constant and its unit comes from this equation. If unit comes from this equation here f is equal to kx f is equal to kx so k is equal to f divided by x so we are getting our equation newton per meter okay time period time period it is related that t is equal to 2 pi divided by omega yes it's a very new term for all of you Omega. Omega is angular velocity. When a body is moving, when a body is moving along a circular path, then the velocity of this body should be or must be defined by a symbol or by a letter that is omega. But this is not V but this is not V. V for linear motion and omega for angular motion. It is our relation between angular motion and time period. So that's why I have written here T is equal to 2 pi divided by omega and omega, we know omega is equal to, omega is equal to root over K by M omega is equal to root of k by m whereas k is the spring constant and m is mass m is mass of m is mass of this spring or the spring that the spring that is extended by somewhat object okay somewhat object having mass that is having mass m okay and the, another famous equation for determining time period of the simple harmonic motion t is equal to 2 pi root over l by z t is equal to 2 pi root over l by z that's why i have inserted here some example okay first example a bob having mass having mass 20 gram okay is suspended by a string of two meter from the point of suspension. What is time period? Okay, from the point of from the point of suspension. What is its time period? Because you know very well that time period t is equal to two pi root of r l over z. Two pi root of r l over z. Okay. So you know it very well that l is Two meter and g it is known to all of us g is equal to 9.8 now second math a spring having mass 100 gram is elongated 10 centimeter by 10 newton force what is time period okay time period t is equal to 2 pi root of l by g and 2 pi root of m by k so you cannot use this equation here because the given value is not following this equation. 
so you have to use 2 pi root over m over k 2 pi root over m over k here you have to find out the value of spring constant spring constant you know f is equal to kx from this you have been able to find out the value of k okay after finding this value after finding the value of k you will be able to find out the value of time period okay now wave what is wave you know it's very well that sound is one kind of wave and sound is a or is a kind of energy for which we can hear or sound is energy that must have ability to create sensation of hearing wave the periodic motion of particles which transfers which transfers energy from one place to another but this particle does not displace or change its or their position this particle does not change their position such a type of motion is called wave such a type of motion is called wave okay the simple figure of wave is like that There are some types of waves. First of all, mechanical wave, electromagnetic wave. What is mechanical wave? The wave which need elastic medium to propagate is called mechanical wave. That means the wave which need medium, which need medium, this medium should be elastic medium is called mechanical wave and the wave that is not need any medium to propagate from one place to another place is called electromagnetic wave sun ray and the wave of our wave that is emitted from our mobile is also electromagnetic wave types of mechanical waves there are two types of mechanical wave transverse wave and longitudinal waves okay transverse wave the wave that travels in the direction and this direction for the movement of particle of this medium the movement of the particle of this medium should be perpendicular should be perpendicular to the direction of propagation to the direction of propagation you know it very well that this is the symbol of wave but you know wave has the ability to transfer energy from one place to another place and this is the propagational direction this is the propagational direction here the movement of particles of this medium should be perpendicular should be perpendicular with this should be perpendicular with this direction that is the direction of propagation that is the direction of propagation let us suppose the particles of this medium is here okay draw a perpendicular so the angle of this is 90 okay Suppose this particle of the medium is here. Okay, what is the angle? What is the angle between the position of this particle and the direction of propagation? Okay, let us draw an perpendicular. Okay, this angle is 90. So, such a type of motion is called 
or it's such a type of wave is called transverse wave is called transverse wave okay let's see this definition the wave which moves perpendicularly to the direction of vibration or to the direction of propagation of the particles of medium is called transverse wave water wave light wave etc are the example of transverse wave longitudinal wave the wave that travels in a direction that is per parallel that is parallel to the direction of propagation that is parallel to the direction of propagation is called longitudinal wave okay now i am going to make you i am going to make you easy about this concept okay let us suppose this is the motion this is the motion of a spring this is the motion of a spring you know it very well that the spring elongation or the sound wave that is passed through this spring due to the contraction and expansion due to the contraction and expansion re respectively due to the contraction and expansion respectively okay let us suppose this is the position of particle and this is our direction of propagation this is our direction of propagation here let us suppose it is the position or it is the movement of particle it is also the movement of particle and it is also the movement of particle here the movement of this particle is seems to us that it is happening along a straight line so the direction of propagation and the movement of this particle is parallel to each other that's why such a type of wave is called longitudinal wave such a type of wave is called wave is called longitudinal wave sound wave in air medium is the example of longitudinal wave okay characteristics of sound wave there are some important characteristics for sound waves or mechanical waves let's say this for mechanical waves a medium is necessary wave propagates due to the vibration or go up down of particles of medium energy can be transferred from one phase to another energy is proportional to the amplitude of the wave and velocity depends on the nature of the medium for air it is stated as 330 meter per second for water it is 1439 meter per second and velocity of tight roof under tension is more than that of loose roof than that of loose roof okay A reflection echo standing wave are the example of reflection and sound submerged under water is the example of refraction that is occurred for sound wave superposition is the very important criteria for sound wave okay let's see this two figure here this is a wave that is moving from that is moving from thin to thick thin to thick of a string thin to thick of a string so reflection is happening so reflection is happening but the phase of this wave or reflection of wave is not same the phase of this reflection is not same this is out of phase this is out of phase here when sound wave is passing from thick to thin from 
thick too thin guys look at this from thick to thin this portion is thin in this case the reflection wave will be occurred in phase because the half wave part and it is also the half wave part are in same surface are in same surface that's why it is called reflection in phase or reflection in same phase okay superposition of wave boys you can see this is a figure of wave and this is also a figure of wave okay you have to know what is same phase wave and what is out of phase of wave let us suppose it is our wave boys what is complete wave or what is complete rotation you have to know let us suppose it is a half circle and it is also half circle okay let us suppose i am putting this half circle here um, after putting this two half circle you are getting a complete circle so such a type of wave is called complete wave is called complete wave okay let us suppose it's a complete wave that is number 1 and number 2 it is also a complete wave okay let's see this portion is same to the first and this portion is same to the first so this two wave is called in phase this two waves is called in phase this two waves is called in phase here this wave and this wave is in phase when these two waves are added with each other this two waves are added is other then a stronger wave is being got okay stronger wave is being got because these two waves are in phase that's why you are getting constructive you are getting constructive wave but here you are getting destructive wave that's why there is no symbol of wave there is no symbol of wave okay but uh, here there is a symbol of wave and this wave is not similar this wave is not similar to this wave okay this is called superposition and the, your concept will be very much clear after observing a video okay let's see all right we'll now have a look at how we can form a standing wave by um disturbing a string so that the, a continuous traveling wave travels towards a fixed boundary and reflects and interferes with itself really so the reflected wave interferes with the wave that's still incident on the boundary so let's have a look at what that looks like so here we can see we're creating a continuous up and down disturbance on the left end of the string which causes a continuous traveling wave which is the red wave here to travel towards this boundary okay boys and look at this um, so this wave is represented by the red medium. wave particles what we're going to do what's going to happen at the boundary is we're going to get an inversion of the wave and reflection is we're going to have that represented by a blue wave traveling back in the opposite direction we'll just slow this down while it's happening so here we can see the, the first look at this wave that part of the wave is just video. about to arrive at the boundary and it reflects and inverts and the reflected wave interferes with the incident wave that's still arriving at the boundary and that interference results in a kind of cancellation of parts of the wave so that they're interfering as per the principle of superposition and we'll just speed the animation up again and what we can see is as the returning wave the reflected wave interferes with the incident wave we have the conditions required for a standing wave to be set up this is and you can see that we get this 
this is our pattern. constructive wave. Um, okay. But stationary nodes and anti nodes this is along our the way. Destructive um, wave. Look uh, at and here. We have yes, this, uh, a this standing wave, which is this black okay. wave. This position which is, is just the superposition of the two. This position is destructive, but um, waves of equal is amplitude and here. equal frequency. Okay, you have to know wave related quantities. Okay, let's see. It's our wave. Already, you have known that this portion is complete. This com this portion is complete cycle. Okay, it's for complete cycle. So the time required or is needed to complete this complete cycle is called time period, and it is denoted by capital T. It is denoted by capital T. Okay, and during this complete cycle during this complete cycle or rotation this wave this wave is this wave is covering some distance this wave is covering some distance and it is denoted by lambda it is denoted by lambda boys it's you you don't know about this so look at this this is lambda okay this sign is called lambda so this is our wavelength. Wavelength is defined by lambda and time for a complete rotation is called time period. And here, this portion is maximum. The portion that is the displacement of particles of medium is maximum here and is this position or this portion is called amplitude that is defined by t sorry that is defined by a that is defined by a okay let's see this definition complete vibration if a wave transmitting particle from moves from a certain point and again comes back to the same points then the motion is called complete vibration time period the time required for one complete vibration of a wave transmitting particle is known as its time period it is expressed by t and its unit is second here this portion this portion for time period t and this portion for time period t but it is first time period it is for first time period and from this point to this point it is for second time period okay it is for second time period wavelength the distance traveled by the wave during one complete oscillation or one complete rotation is called wavelength that's why this portion or this distance is called wavelength or wavelength also be defined wavelength also be defined from this amplitude from this amplitude to the next amplitude of same phase to the next amplitude of same phase okay from this position to this position it is also um, it is also defined by wavelength okay and from this point to this point it is also wavelength okay wavelength is a traveling distance for one complete rotation you have to remember this okay Frequency. Frequency is a number of vibration per second. Frequency is a number of vibration per second. So, its unit is 
साइकिल पर सेकेंड और हार्ड इट्स यूनिट इज साइकिल पर सेकेंड और हार्ड यू हैव टू राइट हार्ड लाइक दिस वे बट नॉट दिस वे ओके Amplitude. The maximum displacement of a wave transmitting particle from the mean position or equilibrium position is called amplitude. Yes, this is the mean position, and maximum displacement of a maximum displacement of a wave transmitting particle is here. That's why this is amplitude. This is amplitude. Okay, this is amplitude. Okay, phase. What is phase? The state of motion of a vibrating particle of wave at any instant is called its phase. Okay. What is phase? Okay, let's see. You already have known about phase. Let us suppose it is half cycle and it is also half cycle. Mm. it is half cycle this half cycle and this half cycle are in same surface that's why let us suppose it is a it is b and it is c so a and c half cycle in phase or same phase but a and b out of phase a and b out of phase okay phase is the combination of displacement velocity acceleration etc wave velocity velocity means the covering distance for one second so the distance that a wave travels in one second in a particular direction in a particular direction is called wave velocity and its unit is meter per second its unit is meter per second okay relation between wave velocity and wave length you know it very well that the traveling distance for one complete rotation is lambda the distance traveled in the time of f complete vibration f complete vibration is called f lambda and you know it very well that f number of vibrations are produced in one second so this is defined by p so you are getting a relation between velocity and frequency or among velocity frequency and lambda among velocity frequency and lambda is equal to v is equal to f lambda v is equal to f lambda okay v is equal to f lambda here v is equal to f lambda means v is the velocity v is the velocity of sound v is the velocity of sound f is the frequency f is the frequency of sound and lambda is the wavelength of sound lambda is the wavelength of sound okay there is a relation between time period and frequency it is reciprocal of time period frequency is reciprocal of time period that that's why i have written here f is equal to 1 by t and there is a, there is another relation for frequency that is frequency is equal to capital n over t capital n means number of vibration capital n means number of complete vibration number of complete vibration per time number of complete vibration per time is called frequency from this definition this relation has come and v is equal to f lambda you already have known okay 
let's see a math. A sound wave completes 800 oscillation per minute and covers distance with 330 meter per second through air medium. Calculate frequency. Frequency, you know it very well. Frequency is defined by F. F is equal to F is equal to N divided by T. Okay. Now for B, time period. F is equal to 1 over T. From this equation, you can get time period and wavelength. V is equal to F lambda. From this equation, you can find out wavelength. Okay. Now, number two, sound of frequency one kilohertz is produced by a tuning fork. It was allowed to pass through air, water, and iron. It was formed that the velocity of sound in air is 334 meter per second, in water, 1493 meter per second, and in iron, 5130 meter per second. What are the wavelengths? in this medium. What are the wavelengths in this medium? V is equal to F lambda. You have to find out lambda. So lambda is equal to V over F from this data. F is 1000 and V for AR 334 and you can get easily the value of lambda okay for air medium in this way you can also get the wavelength for water medium and iron okay my dear boys i think your concept about the sound wave has been clear now I am going to finish my today's class. So, no more delay here. My dear boys, before finishing my today's discussion, I will discuss this about this system. Here you can see, this is the figure of sound wave. This is the figure of sound wave. Figure of sound wave, sound wave is not a transverse wave, it is longitudinal wave itself. So, due to the contraction and expansion, due to the contraction and expansion, sound wave is moving, or sound wave moves from one place to another place, moves from one place to another place. So, this contraction and this expansion this con contraction and this expansion will will form this these two contraction and expansion will form a lambda that is wavelength will form a lambda that is wavelength okay so now it's our turn to find out the lambda here this is for one lambda and this is for another one lambda and this is for half lambda so you are getting one to 2.5 that is three by two lambda okay three by two lambda it's a very important term for you, okay? It's a very important term for you. Such a type of CQ is coming frequently in your exam. It's coming frequently in your exam, okay? So, contraction means half lambda, expansion means half lambda. So, here you have to find out how many contraction is here and how many expansion is here. Yes, it is contraction. It is also contraction it is also contraction so there is 3 into lambda by 2 and one expansion and it is the another expansion so 
this expand to this two expansion will form one lambda will form one lambda will form one lambda okay will form one lambda so sorry my dear boys i have i have done wrong here okay this is pi by 2 lambda this is pi by 2 lambda okay so you are getting here pi by 2 lambda now it is very easy to find out the solution of this math determine the temperature of air determine the temperature of air okay and number d what will be the change of wavelength of sound in water in compared with air okay my dear boys it's your turn to find out the value okay my dear boys at a glance what i have discussed today simple harmonic motion types of wave wave related quantities and the characteristics of sound wave some sorts of questions that is knowledge based questions and comprehension or understanding level based questions are inserted here please try to solve these questions application based questions and higher order based questions are inserted here is issue prior level base to solve these questions some sample of mcqs are added here for the betterment of your understanding so you should try a level base to solve these questions let's see your home task this system is given here for your home task after solving these questions please send me through our website or through my gmail make 20 mcq on the basis of my today's discussion and this is our important part assignment will be opened on every thursday through bcc website so be punctual about this assignment yes my dear boys if you have any query please inbox me or ask me i will try my level best to solve your question you know it very well that you are passing a very tough situation during this corona outbreak you are not safe outside of your home so don't go outside of your home try your level best to follow my instruction that i have given here never make a plan to go outside of your home pass quality time with your parents and family members stay home stay safe thank you